Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, creator of Approval Test. Recently I've been working on a project where we're using the ASP.MVC framework, and we've developed some ways to test that specifically focusing on the views from MVC. I want to share those with you guys so you can use it on your own projects. Now, first of all, there's a lot of little things that you need to set up to get going. I'm going to talk about the overall architecture and then go into the details. Now, to test the views, you need to realize that it's really, really hard to render these if you don't go through the web server. I've done a couple different spikes with different people to find out how to do it, and we just never were successful in a way that wasn't extremely complicated and brittle. But we found a way that's quite easy by using the web server. And so we're going to start our unit test over in this space. And keep in mind, this is a different virtual machine because this is going to call out through a socket to the actual web server. But once we're in the web server, we're not going to go the normal route to our controller. We're going to instead go to a test controller, a controller whose sole purpose is to set up your test and render it consistently. And really, this test controller is what I think of as the normal unit test in my day-to-day -day activities. This test controller allows us to get around the regular controller not touch the database and instead go to more convenient seams in our controller. And to do all of this, there's a whole bunch of things we need to take into consideration. Base classes, MVC tests, splitting things into partial classes, using some seams, some explicit views, and some changes that we need to do when we're in debug or when we're in release mode. And that's a lot of stuff. It's very overwhelming when I had to put this all together. But it turns out that most of this is just setup stuff. Once you do it, you don't have to think about it again. In fact, when I think about it, I see that list like this. Test controller. That's what I have to do to test a page. And hopefully you'll see that too. But if I don't go into the details in this webcast, it's going to be very confusing for you to get your first one running. But stick with it, because once you get the first one running, the second one is extremely easy. All right, let's go take a look at the code. So here I am in my test, and I'm going to use XUnit for this example. Now what I want to test first is just a simple search page. I have it showing here, rendered through Cassini. And essentially what I want to do right now is I just want to say, verify the results of this URL. To do that, I'm going to go in here and say, MVC approvals dot verify MVC page, and instead of passing the URL, which is a lot harder to maintain, I'm instead going to create a new search controller, and then put a function pointer to the index. Now this is actually going to use that information to create the URL. It's exactly the same as if I'd passed in the string of the URL. It's just a lot easier to both program against and maintain. So. Once I do this, I can run my test, and you'll see that there's a failure. Here it is, saying that I've not set up my port factory. Well, if I look here, I can see I'm running Cassini in port 3134. And so, I'm going to go to my search, and I'm going to say port factory port equals 3134. Once I do this, I can render this correctly. You'll notice that it launches the captured results, which look identical to when I run it in Cassini. Now that I've seen it, I can simply move the file over to approve it, the same as everything else. I'm going to do that here by doing a tortoise diff reporter, and now I can simply use this whole file. Notice I'm only approving the HTML, not the rendered result. Now that I've approved it, I can rerun it, and I've achieved regression. Unfortunately, I don't want to have to keep doing this MVC port every place. So instead, what I'm going to do is create a class called MVC test, and I'm going to put a simple constructor in here and move my port factory into here. That way I can have a single place that does all my setup for my tests. And this works great for my search controller, where I check the index. Of course, this takes no input 
and doesn't even hit the database, so it always is consistent. But I'd also like to test when I actually pass in a string and do a search. So what I want to do is make a unit test that tests the scenario where we actually get search results. But I don't want an integration test, so I don't want something that goes all the way back to the database. Essentially what I'm going to do is put the test code here. So let's go back to our test for a second and create a new fact. Test robot search. Now I have a do and a verify, but in MVC, only thing I pay attention to here is the verify. So I'm going to do an MVC approvals dot verify an MVC page. I need a new search controller and I'm going to have to make a function just like the index, which simply runs my scenario. So test robot search. And this is where the do is going to move to. So I'll take that out and I'm going to generate this method. The first thing is notice that this test robot search is going to create mock results call the index. But the problem is there's no way right now to pass these mock results into the index. So I need to create a seam. You'll notice that this is basically the same as here. So we already have a duplication that's giving us a hint that we should do it. Now in previous episodes we've talked about the peel and slice techniques I'm about to use. I'll put links here that you can click on in case you've never seen this before or you simply want to refresh your memory. But basically what I'm going to do here is just take it and pull it out into a method. I'm going to call the method index as well, but this makes it very easy for me to see what this page render is like for a given search text and given results. Now that I have this, I can very easily copy it up here. Where my initial search result is zero and my blog are empty results. Now, that was a manual refactoring. I'm going to temporarily have this return null just so this can compile and go back to my first results to make sure that it still works. Now that I know it's still working, I can start to write my actual thing. But the, you'll notice right now this is already getting very messy. I don't want my test code here. Now, it's unavoidable that it's in my production code, but it doesn't need to be sitting intermingled with my production code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take search controller and I'm going to add a new class here. And I'm going to call it search controller dot test. Now, I have this search controller, and what I'm going to do is make it a partial class. Take this into my test. I no longer need to do the extension because it's already happening in the other partial. But I now have a space where I can put my test. And that means I'm going to copy this out of here to keep this clean and move it into here. Great. So now let's take a look at this English. The first thing is I need some mock results. I already created those earlier. So now I have some blogs that will come back. And now I can simply make my call into the seam I just created for the index. The string I was searching for was robots and here are my search results. You'd think this would be all that you need to do, that would be really nice, but there's something happening that's a little insidious. And that is, this view is not being passed in the page. It's figuring it out because it's called by the index. Unfortunately, the way that MVC is constructed, it takes the page not from the method that's calling it, but rather from the method that you came into. And since we're going to be coming in to test robot search, it's going to retroactively apply that. And that means what I need to do here is be explicit about it. 
and say index. Now this will work, but it's not how I normally do it. Again, just for maintenance things. What I really wish is that this knew who called it and put the view in here. And I can do that with a convenience function I wrote in approval test called explicit. But those two things are syntactically the same. Once I do the explicit, I can go back to my unit test and I can now run my robot search. Now I can see the page, search blogs for robots and the results as they come in. This is what I want it to look like. And if it's not, I can continue to play with it until it is. Once I've seen that it works, I can change my reporter and move the HTML over to be approved. This is your test. And these aren't very meaningful. They're just entry points to get your page for regression purposes. The real test resolves here in the partial class, whose purpose is to set up the scenario and render the view. Let's go back and look at the big picture again so we can see how this all relates. So again, in your unit test, you just have an entry point that goes out through a web call into the server. But instead of going to the normal controller, we go to a test controller. And once we're in that test controller, we set up our scenario and then pass in to a seam to the normal controller. Now we've talked about the base class, the MVC. We talked about this partial controller, which is really where the test is and how we're gonna need to add seams to it. We even talked about how we need to make those views explicit. I haven't yet talked about the release and did debug changes. In an internal website, it might not be a big deal. But if you're publishing something out to the World Wide Web, it's probably not a good idea to expose these. And so what I'm going to do is put an if block here on debug. By wrapping my entire partial class in a debug, my test code is now not going to go to production but it also means that it won't compile in release mode. So I have to also do this on my test. The other thing is, if you decide to use the explicit instead of putting the actual page there, you might get problems based on optimization. To take care of that, what I do is I go to the properties in my project, and I unclick the optimize code. Once you've done all of that though, everything should be easy to do, and whenever you want to make a new test, you simply put your test method here in your partial class. And that's why when I think about testing ASP.MVC pages, this is how that list looks to me. Well, I hope you've found this useful. It's been really important for us. We have almost complete test coverage on our project and it's been very easy to do and maintain. I'd like to close by highlighting Henrik, who's out there in Stockholm and contacted me about ASP.MVC in the very beginning. It was through sessions with him that we pioneered most of the techniques that we talked about today. He's also pioneered a lot of techniques for using push data where you can take an object, JSON it, and send it in to an MVC. But that's a whole nother video. You can find them on Twitter. And as always, if you have any questions, tweet it with the hashtag approval test. I monitor that and will answer you promptly.